We will head straight into the second map where we've missed one or two rounds. It's currently 2-0 to CEX, so they are already off to that good start. Yep, CEX looking very strong out of the gate. They get those first two rounds coming into the first gun round where the actual action happens, Alex. We didn't miss anything important. You know, we just seen CEX probably tear it on on fears and coming into the first gun run is where things get exciting it's going to be a play from CUX towards B with two players they've got some control towards the middle position they can definitely try and open up a B split Emin he's going to find an opening headshot and give the advantage to fears here at the beginning of round number three Rezu elects to fall back ZNX has found the kill towards mid and CEX starting to route towards that B-bomb site. I think they're waiting to see if Murky can get a pick with this AWP. Doesn't seem too likely though. There's no one in towards heaven and that molly towards the site isn't going to cause too many issues. Here comes the push. The MAC-10 leading the charge. Rezu looking towards the site itself, not able to get the kill and Toten G will fall back behind cover to buy his team time. Yep, still under three versus three. Murky still alive. Still a chance here for CEX. ZNX trying to make a play up towards middle, just patiently waiting for someone to make an extensive play inside of that Z connector, but just not happening currently. With 40 seconds left, they're just going to post up as best as possible. They've still got the bomb, trying to find a little bit of space to work with. Nuke Dog trying to fight towards B. Toad and G will win that fight. And with 30 seconds left, CEX are left with no other option but to commit into the B bomb site. Actually, it's going to be a thaw. Oh my god, this is a, this is going to be so risky. ZNX needs to find the headshot onto the A bomb side here with 20 seconds. There we go. That's the headshot that's needed. ZNX, oh my goodness. He's trying to run up middle. I mean, oh, this is just brutal. This surely does not go well. ZNX will pick up that kill. Probably not enough time to get back to the bomb unless he gets it right now. This has to work. He has to get the bomb going right now. He actually does have time into a one versus one. Totem G is 5 HP. ZNX on 10. So this is definitely a chance for Fears coming into this. They could actually get this done. They've got a kit alive on Toten, so he can still play the time. But ZNX somehow gets his way over towards that bomb site with the quad kill. Has to ace to win this. ZNX still holding the right hand side. Toten G could fake the bomb, and that will happen. But ZNX is going to peak just at the right time. He knows there's no defuse. He can just sit back and relax. And there is the shot. It's an ace for ZNX as CEX take their third round win over the line. And that was a, a really close run thing. As you were saying, the bomb having to go back towards A. There were two critical fights they needed to win. And finding that trade towards mid was just about good enough for CEX to hold on for a round number three three on the board and into this one fierce again only with pistols never underestimate them but it's looking likely that cex can extend their lead even further razu gonna be over towards the useless position hype jiggle peeking to gather some information but razu gonna peek into the angle he spotted so there is information gathered here for the cts but they'll not really gather too much important information I see X definitely just going for the default spread out play. Although look at the control they have inside of Amy and Alex. Swaggy's already inside there, so they can play a stack over towards the B bombs until otherwise informed. Yeah, not a bad idea. Swaggy always has the chance to do something, even if it is going to be an A play and a good headshot from Hype. Nice way to start off the round. That's going to prompt some aggression from Fierce. They look to recover that rifle, and Swaggy gets a headshot of his own. Looking for more, and Swaggy finds it. This could be happening for Fierce here. They're up in a four on two, and these pistols are really proving themselves. Yeah, finding that map control inside of Amy proves to be very useful indeed. Swaggy going for the triple kill, picks up the kills, and Emin comes in with a deagle. It's three to one, and Fierce will win off the back of pistols. CEX gets scared in that one. You know, they had all the advantages. They had the man advantage. They had the weaponry advantages. All they needed to do was just commit into a bomb site, Kongo get together, and find the opening kills. But CEX, they crumbled. The disjointedness was definitely something that was present on Inferno, but they were able to recover from it. This time, they, they cannot afford to do that. Fierce will take the opportunities as they begin to warm up. Swaggy was one of the players that was maybe somewhat underwhelming on that first map, so really nice to see him step up. And as a reward, he gets given an AWP into round number five. 
Only pistols in play for CEX. The timing might be right, though, as they push through the door. Swaggy in position. The boost has come through, but only the one kill on that boost. And here comes Swaggy again with the Deeg. Not using the AWP he has in his back pocket. Ends up falling for his troubles. We're into a 2v2. And Alice gets an AWP into his hands. But here comes Hype pushing around. Gets them both and secures the round win for Fierce. But that was a little closer than they would have wanted. Yeah, back and forth we go again. This is the type of... Uh Pine for pine, we were expecting to come in from both of these teams. Issues comes in, Fierce able to find it. And uh, m definitely making for an exciting game here. We're Fierce already, you know, losing us 3-0, and, and then obviously winning with the pistols. Again, it was really the individual performance from Swaggy in that one that got them the victory. And then obviously able to back it up with another round after that. So, 3-2, CEX have the AWP in play on Murky, the rifles across the board as well. Fierce have the AWP in play on Swaggy, which is definitely a sky prospect. Looking forward to the Murky Swaggy battles. We didn't really get to see too much of it in Inferno. Hopefully we get to see more present here on Cash. Especially in towards mid, that's certainly a possibility. Swaggy's orc is over towards A, so it's not going to be the case in this round. Murky's still going to look for the opening pick. It would be against a player with a rifle, so he should be favoured if this fight were to come through at long range. But Murky leading the way, allowing his teammates to gain mid control, and there it is. Emin was trying to play up close, but he gets cleared, and CEX again able to get the man lead and mid control for their troubles. Yeah, Hyde pushed up inside of the vent. Able to find Murky, Molotov drops. Rasu able to find the head of Toto and G, and suddenly it's into a 4 versus 3. Fight coming in, Hype. Two angles to deal with, but he deals with it perfectly. The smoke kind of assisting him, but he's able to double up nevertheless. And he stays alive in underneath the vent. CEX looking to try and take victory here, but Rasu able to find the frog. Nuke will follow up, and it's all on to Swaggy. I've painted him has the star, but this is the time to show it as the bomb is planted in the default position at Molotov. That's going to force the player to walk into the crosshair. And oh, hitting crosshair of Swaggy, who's hungry for blood as he finds himself the frog. And it's all on to Nuke Dog. And he will lose it out to Swaggy, who steps up and gives Fierce the third and evens the scoreline once again. Yeah, Swaggy switched out to the AK there, assuming he'd have to push the site and take a closer range fight. Instead, he gets the headshot, he gets the chance to fight at long range, and it ends up working for him. CEX now have got a decision to make. I think it's got to be a buy at this point. They've got enough money for at least three rifles. Oh, no, they're not going to force up. I'd have thought they would go for the gamble here. They could have got a really good buy together, all things considered. And this is money isn't exactly great, but they think they can go with the pistols. And let's see if CEX have something in mind towards B. Yeah, Swagger winning here with the AWP. Such a hero in the last one. Looking to open up things in this one. As they're charging towards him, that smoke hole. Oh. This is so faulty, but he doesn't actually get a frag. Nuke Dog with the Deagle headshot. Payback from the last clutch, and Toads and G will double up. Hype able to assist. Although the kills just keep coming through for Nuke Dog. He's able to get himself another Deagle headshot. But Fee Balbor, for Bam, I believe it is, is able to find the last two. And it's 4 to 3 as Fierce Esports will take the lead here on Cash. And this is starting to look scary. I think this is more comfortable ground, right, for Fierce Esports. They kind of looked a little bit out of their depth on Inferno. But Cash seems to be a map they've, they've started quite comfortably on here already. Yeah, here on the second map, Cash, which I believe was Fierce's map pick. Again, Murky's got that orc on the T side. He's not been too impactful with this at the start of the game, though. Only one kill to his name and seven deaths in the first seven rounds. So considering the investment you put in towards that orc, it's pretty important that he is able to up his game. And it looks as though Nuke Dog's found the opening kill. Mix in a second. That's going to cause all sort of issues for Fierce. They're going to have to start rotating over. And oh no, it goes from bad to worse. Murky gets a kill of his own. And this looks like it's the round almost guaranteed at this point. Yeah, hype. For Bam have to make this work. CEX, they've got everything going their way. Fierce have to somewhat... Uh, I don't know how they pull this one out of the bag. I don't think they do at this point. Maybe a couple of kills, that's probably about it. Unless they find one here, it's probably unlikely. We'll have to 2M484, so probably just back off and save. Give CEX round number four, and they will even the scoreline once again. Oh, being fine, that's actually not too bad. And yeah, 
hand. So they will actually have quite uh, a substantial amount to save into the next. So it's very, very uh, advised to get these into the next round. CEX, pretty clean. I mean, only losing Nuke Dog, but if it's a two for one, he's able to pick himself up a double kill. So far, who are you favoring coming into this map, Alex? I, I, it's kind of hard to call because Fierce definitely looked a little bit more comfortable. But then again, CEX just have those big individual hitters that just got themselves this round. Yeah, not an easy one to call, that's for sure. I think I would still slightly favor CEX, even though this is Fierce's map pick, just because of those individuals you were talking about. Also because of the fact that it looks as though Fierce again are somewhat on the back foot in terms of the money side of things. They will still be able to buy into this round. The one thing we are going to have to see from CEX is a bit of an improved performance from Murky into this one. Again, only two for seven right now with that orb. And CEX about to move towards the B bomb site. Everyone in towards B. The smoke is deployed, but Totem G needs to be careful. Moving back to the bomb site, he needs some assistance and it's not coming. He is going to be dealt with and CEX all over the B bomb site. Yeah, I love the site. CEX have control. The bomb is going to be planted towards the back lines. The advantage is here for CEX once again and even further as Nuke Dog will spray, spray through the box towards uh, Checkers. Actually connects inside of CT spot and so Fierce again left trying to save these weapons. It's important that they do so because obviously there's not much money built up. They've invested everything possible into this one and so all put Swaggy rifles and play on Hype and M and definitely viable option to force by in the last two players into the next and keep the attack up but Swaggy gets insta-killed as LS pre-fires the angle headshot coming through knows what the other player is they're gonna walk right into this no weapons will be saved as Fierce Esports Emin surely falls here oh actually gets himself a kill oh he's done a, he's done a stellar job of staying alive there under whole uh, against all odds he gets the M4 in the next round but they would have loved the AWP in the other one yeah, only the one rifle to show for his efforts. And that means the rest of the team will be almost fully saving. Just a $600 investment into the two P250s, I believe. Emin could also drop a P250 over to a teammate, but I don't think he's realized he's got that in his back pocket. So he hasn't had the chance to drop that one over. Some damage done by Feebob, but ZNX is there to deal with the push, and Emin ooh, gets a kill, but too many angles to deal with. ZNX, therefore his third of the round. Nicely done. Yeah, Hype and Totung left. Two versus four. The bomb in play towards Useless is carrying itself over towards the B side of things. It's currently Nuke Dog is making sure no one walks in there, so they can get free access here. Headshot should be going through pretty quickly. Hype will spot the info, only with a P250, unlikely gets much done here, but it's all about delaying long enough for Totem G to try and come in and help. But it just wasn't enough, and Totem G will set up for an exit or two here. CX about to give themselves six, and a little bit of leeway, a little bit of breathing space to work with coming into the second map of this best of three. And if you are just joining us, the ESL Premiership of UK and Ireland. CX are up one map trying to get themselves to the land finals which will be taking place in january alex which uh, is gonna be exciting yeah we already have those first three teams confirmed we've only got one more spot left up for grabs and it's for the winner of this series right now cex looking the more likely team to take it as they've been able to really take over the game on this t side Again, Nuke Dog oftentimes involved in the early exchanges. So the fact that he's having a pretty good performance is definitely important. And oh, there we go. Nuke Dog denies the save from coming through. A nice little bonus for CEX at the end of the round, forcing the full reinvestment from Fierce. They have to rebuy all of their rifles into this round. And you can see what that means for their nades. A little bit lacking on three players. They all get smokes. However, oh, outside of that, some players missing some nades. And into round 11 we go. Pretty standard setup from Fierce. No orb to work with, so they can't really continually fight towards mid in case Murky was there trying to deal with them. And again, Murky has not been part of most of these round wins. 
that's something that could change into the future. And if Murky could step up in some of these latter rounds, CEX could still gain a really, really strong lead if they keep this win streak. And there we go. The orb finally chimes in. Spamming away with the Famas, trying to do a little bit of damage to the squeaky door. And advantage is there for CEX. And actually looking to try and edge their way into the a bomb site, but instead have to try and slow the play a little bit. As they're keeping one player inside of Squeaky, the rest of the players in CX beginning to back away off this angle. So with 50 seconds left, CX still with the advantage, still with the utility. They have so much to play with, so much room, Alex, to make a decision on what they want to do. And it seems to be they're going to pull off the players inside the middle. They have, they are ready to shape up towards the A bomb site with the one inside of Squeaky, but that bomb is drifting its way back and forth between the B and the A site, and actually making the decision that they want to go through A. They've got 30 seconds left. Something that CX have struggled with is the decision making in a crunch time situation. So they have to make the play and quickly here. The bomb is on A. It's Rezu opening things up or attempting to, but Fabam is able to take him. Does damage to his teammate, but Emin steps up. 19 seconds left. Murky and LS trying to hold the spot, but LS will double up the bomb will be planted and hype left in a one versus two coming in from a main though here he comes oh insta headshot from ls no chance for hype to do anything cex his win streak is just unstoppable right now and it's two different players stepping up for cex in the last game it was all about murky and ls in this game it's all about nuke dog and ZNX. And again, that just goes to show the depth of talent on this roster. They can have two completely different players step up on two completely different maps to try and carry them through. And that is always an important aspect to have as a team. As for Fierce, it's almost full deegs into this round. As the smokes go in towards mid, CEX are going to have to deal with a bit of a stack towards mid. Flash by is covered the top, Hype is in under the... Looks to try and fly, because he picks up the Deagle. Kills coming in, ZNX has dropped, LS able to pick up two. Rensu there with one as well, it's suddenly on... All of the BAM! He's in a one versus four, Deagle in play, rattling the shots, and LS will rip his head from his shoulders and give CX it on the board. Already confirming themselves, at least a one-run lead, moving into the second half. But of course, would always want to get a little bit more than that, Alex. And they're in a pretty solid position to do so. They just have to break down this buy of the Fierce Esports side. And speaking of, look what they've got. Yeah, two orps invested into round 13. Maybe because this game is starting to slip away from Fierce. They realize they need to switch something up now oh. and it's not going to work. Murky in position to open things up and the orp is still going. Oh, what a shot from Murky. He finds the headshot. Looking for a little bit more. The smoke will deny any further action, but it's still the bombsite lost. Yeah, Murky is an absolute animal with that AWP. Pick it up two kills, even onto the headshot angle, but walking right through Emin, he will be... Denied access to the B-bomb site, and he will be ripped apart, and it's 9-4. What a play from Murky. Those, those shots are not easy to hit. And, you know, speaking of Murky, had a massive performance on Inferno. Bit quiet here on uh, on Cash. He's got five kills, seven deaths. Not exactly the performance we've seen from him on Inferno. But he's had three into the last one, and uh, obviously picking up those last two kills. We'll give him the five that he has currently sitting on his scoreboard. So if that's a, if that's a sign of things to come for CEX, then... Things are looking very good for them. Yeah, when your bottom fragger steps up and does something like that, it's generally a good sign for the overall team. Lily shows they are firing on almost all cylinders. Totem G with a nice flashbang. Sprays away for the opening kill on towards that 5-7. Swaggy gets one of his own, and CEX puts on the back foot. They're trying to find some mid control. Swaggy fights again. It's all going right for Fierce in this one. They're winning every single 1v1 duel. And Emin tries to make that trend continue. Murky and Captain Incredible, aka Rezu, have to try and pull this one back. And it doesn't seem likely. Swaggy yeah. with another. Yeah, nice cleanup from Fierce Esports. They kind of needed that one as well, right? If they lost that, CX up to double figures, really punishing it and uh, reeling it in in this first half. But losing that one, CX will not have any money problems. But they've just given Fierce Esports as much of a chance as possible to make this half as close as possible. And uh, six is the best outcome possible for Fierce at this point. You know, at the start of this map, Alex, I started to say Fierce looked a little bit more comfortable. You know, in Inferno, they kind of looked lost. They kind of looked out of their depth. 
coming into this one, they seem to be a bit more comfortable, but ever since EX picked up the momentum, it's just been their show, but Hype looks to try and change that fact, denying access to the B-bomb site along with Token G, and Hype going for the balls to the walls, boy, as he jumps right for the all top, Hype picks up another, and it's a shutdown, it's six and the boy for Fierce moving into that second half, they're giving themselves the best opportunity possible for coming back into this game. Yeah, they salvage something from the first half. Six rounds is not to be sniffed at, or snuffed at, I suppose I should say. CX will need to be aware that this game isn't over and done with yet. Into the second half, they are favorites, but not by a massive amount they may have hoped for, considering how well that started for them. Again, that T side was was pretty strong there from uh, from CEX. Generally, just switching things up a lot of the time. Sometimes going for fairly slow pushes. They went for one or two fast plays, but generally it seemed to be the slow plays that worked well for them. Again, oftentimes it was also the fact that Nuke Dog was able to get the opening kill, or someone else was able to get the opening kill, and then from that five v four, it's much easier to close out the round win. Storyline was taken from Inferno into cash as the individual performances of both Murky and Swaggy going head to head as the stars for this team. And Murky having a bit of a quiet start to cash, but towards the end began to show signs of life with two insane AWP shots opening up the B bomb site. But the problem is he still needs to do it on a more consistent basis moving into the second half. And with CEX being on that CT side, I feel like this is where he strives, you know, or, or where he thrives. Because on that CT side, we like to see him get a dynamic. We like to see him in their faces all over the map, keeping himself unpredictable, finding those kills, falling back, giving the advantage to CEX on the CT side. And if they can find a way here, fears to shut him down, it could get very messy indeed. Well, we'll see if Swaggy can step it up into the second half. Here we are then. The pistol round about to come through. The kills were pretty evenly distributed on the fierce side there. No one really standing out, whereas as for the CEX side of things, they've got a couple of standout performers and a four-man B stack. This is not something you see very often on the CT side, and it looks like it's going to work wonderfully well for them. LS is the only player anywhere near A. This is not going to be an easy hold for him. He's likely to just give up the site once he sees this smoke. Yeah, tap it away, LS just trying to connect headshots, but just not coming through. Actually, Fierce have the bomb site, but... You know, A, it's very common just to sort of leave it on retake. You put the one player up on top of the, the truck and you just play it on retake. You call for the rotates from B. They've still got Utility alive, a Molotov and a Flash on LS, Kit and a Smoke on Captain Incredible or Resu. So this becomes very possible. They just need to find the kills coming in immediately. Totem G, very nice angle, tucked in behind the box. Just no one coming into his crosshair. They're going to wrap towards the right. And here comes the frogs. Hype picking up the first. Emin just sitting inside of Amy. And his teammates doing enough work to keep it in favor of Fierce. And it's an easy sweep up. Swaggy with three, continuing the star player form into the second half as he gives Fierce the pistol and the best opportunity moving forward. Yeah, a bit of a strange retake there. CEX all pushing over on the other side of things. Into round 17. Let's see what that means for them. A full eco, apart from Nuke Dog, who's invested a whopping $300 into this round. Very little in terms of investment from CEX. And I assume it's going to be a relatively easy round win for Fierce, thanks to that fact. Fierce just kind of holding across the map. Not too much to be said here, honestly. Again, not even seeing much aggression from CEX. They've got a little bit of a stack towards A and a little bit of aggression towards B. So that's probably part of the reason as to why they've got the stack in towards the A site. Fierce just making sure they take their time, though. No need to make any mistakes. No need to rush things. And here comes the full-on A stack. LS rotates over now, and it might be the right read. Fierce are looking more in towards A at the start of this round. Should be a pretty easy cleanup, right? They still have got plenty of utility. They're going to try and back everybody in. The only problem I see from this is Fierce haven't really tested the waters elsewhere. So they're about to walk into a stack, which is exactly what CEX want, but you can't really put too much on the pistols, finding anything here. You've got to favor the rifles in any of these situations. Murky got to get called out more hyped. Fast play from Swaggy. They only lose the MAC 10. Though LS finding one with the USP. Trying to make this expensive. 
And an extra on like Assassin's Creed. And only able to get one as Edmund will pick up the triple kill. And easy sweep up at the, on the board for Fierce Esports. Only one round separates these two teams looking to try and make this one go to a third map. Fierce Esports obviously taking a loss on Inferno. Coming into cash, it's it's much more of the, the UK style map, right? It's the map that you should feel pretty comfortable on on both sides of the, of the margin. Wow. I thought CX were buying into this round, but I guess not. They had loads of money. You can see the players have bought Kevlar and pistols, and they've still got $3,500 left behind. So CX taking a very safe approach, wanting to rely on the upcoming gun round rather than pistols in this one. Over on the fierce side, they are likely to assume this is a full buy, so they might not expect this sort of aggression from Murky. Sitting in a close angle in towards Garage. They also might not expect there to be a full on A stack as Murky gives the game away, gives up the fact that he has a pistol. Maybe Fierce can figure this out now. They'll start to put the pieces of the puzzle together. They would have heard that 5 7 in towards mid. They would have spotted the aggression. And I think Fierce should realize that's unlikely to happen in a full buy. Likely it will be an even scoreline once again with Swaggy and Fabam finding the three kills between them. Just like that. Dover Fierce will get nine on the board and it's again even, Alex. This is becoming very exciting. You know, the first map, it started to look one-sided, then it came back, it was very close and we're moving into cash. It's close again, it's pound for pound. We're finding the star players go head to head. We're finding ourselves seeing Murky up there on top against Swaggy a lot of the time. Inferno here on... Cash is a little bit off here, Murky, and if he can start to wake up, perhaps CX, that is the edge that they need. And the reason behind that save previously is because of the fact that they wanted the two orps into this round. They couldn't have afforded a single sniper, so that's why CEX took such a safe option in the previous round. And we'll have to see if that safe approach pays off as Rezu unloads towards mid. Murky gets one of his own. Oh, make it a second for Murky. This has gone horribly wrong for Fierce. They get picked apart one by one towards mid. It looks like Murky has finally lost a fight after he's already given his team a good enough lead. Hype and Totem G have got a long road ahead of them to come back in this round. Nuke Dog able to find hype. Totem G taking fights against Nuke Dog, and again, it's into the one versus four. He's found the first already, but waiting patiently on the opposite end of this is Rezu. Not needed. A ZNX from middle will find the headshot, and so doing is finished off. It's ten to nine. CEX will uh, start to cement a bit of a, a lead here. I feel like as soon as the guns come out, that's when CEX look very in control. I feel like. When Fierce uh, have the advantage in terms of the weapons, they are pretty good at closing those out. But it feels like when the ops, when it's an evil, even playing field, I, you got to give the advantage to CEX. Yeah, and that's why I, I don't actually mind them saving so heavily for those two orbs. Having seen them look so good in the gun round, that's exactly why you'd want to do that. Nick Dog, whoa. What is that? A deep A main smoke? Okay, that's then. That's so nice, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't think I've seen that before. I'm gonna see some A main aggression. Flashes come through. Swaggy here on the hole, but he is isolated. And Nuke Dog able to get the quick trade. Cool ideas coming up from CEX. However, it's still into a three on three. Double up setup still intact here for CEX. Nice shot for Murky. Just lands the headshots every single time. Fabam has dropped in hype. And Tootung. Having trying to clutch a two versus three. Razu flanking in behind, has the iron goal. Oh, Hype still finds the headshot. And it's into a two versus two. Two Ops versus two AK-47s. Fast play, LS able to eliminate the first player. That's Hype gone. And it's all on the Totem G with 50 seconds left. Notice a player inside of the B-ball and like, doesn't know there's one mid and that on. What? what? Four, three stretch, and Murky finds the frag. It's 11 to nine. And that's just so awkward. They see each other, but Murky's the one to react quicker. Yeah, it looked like neither player was really expecting that angle. And it's Murky who eventually reacts in time. I guess because Murky was scoped in, he couldn't actually see that position initially. Either way, the important thing is, not only is it a two-round lead for CEX, but it's also more than likely to turn into a three-round lead, thanks to the fact that Fierce only have pistols to play with.
I wonder if Nuke Dog's nade is going to do damage here. Oh boy, there's the first nade, the second to follow. Okay, doesn't do as much damage as I thought it would. And Fierce will flash in towards it. Nuke able to double up, finished off. ZNX able to walk in, and Murky with a big kill. It's all in the feeball, and he will pick up one with a CZ actually. And pulls out the M484, looks for the one versus three. He knows the weapon to give himself the maximum capacity to play with. This bomb is done on the spot just towards the cross, and this is just very difficult, but. I'd love to see him get something done. At least he's trying it, but Murky holds the angle. He'll be dead either way. And the players sort of aiming and ready to capitalize. And 12 to 9, CX really starting to rein this home and really trying to get this best of three over and done with to pick it up 2 to 0 and place themselves in those finals. Yeah, they want this win and they want it as soon as possible. AKs for Fierce. A fair few nades to work with, and again, they look into this A bomb site. They've looked here one or two rounds in a row, and it's not really worked for them. On this occasion, it's only ZNX holding. In fact, ZNX is thinking about taking some aggression right now. Timing is everything here. Oh, there it is. He spots the bomb. A lot of information gathered, but he is going to be traded on. That leaves the A site fairly vulnerable. The rotate needs to come through quickly. Yeah, Murky up on top of the ladder, looking for the frog. Swaggy finished off. Nuke Dog able to step in and help. Feebob, the last player alive, has a one versus two. He's going to plant the bomb. He'll look for these frogs. The smoke will cover off one angle of approach with the CTs, prevent the vision, and makes it a little bit easier on Feebob to work this. And let's try to get over the top. Azu coming in from the squeaky position. The door is still swung wide open, so we can just peek out immediately. Playing from the core position, this is probably the best for turning it into a series of one versus ones as he's able to pick up the first kill. It's three into this one already. For Bam looking to finish it. Flash deploys to the right side. And then the grenade comes in and for Bam is able to win it on 4K and Fierce Esports stay alive here to get double figures. What a clutch from him. For Bam steps it up when it's really needed. A pretty important swing round because now CEX are stuck on pistols on their side of things. Only the one round win required to force CEX into this position. Again, pistols to be invested from CEX. So I guess we can't count them out straight away. Token G is holding up close, as is Murky. They both push to pretty similar positions. Token G elects to move away from it. it looks as though Fierce want to play a slow anti-eco round once again and this can pose a risk sometimes for example if cex were to buy just a couple of smokes and be able to hold on to them towards the end of the round that could be a real risk for fierce but it's not come through in this one not really much utility for cex is that an extra scene towards the forklift 50 in play ak swings wide makes the fight with the forklift player feebob's gonna throw the ball off that's gonna force him into the right angle for the headshot is not easy but toto able to take the frag onto Murky, Nuke Dog will pull one back, but still, advantage is still there for Fierce. Probably what you expect, I mean, Fierce only with the pist- uh, CX only coming into the pistols. I think it's somewhat expensive, you know, finding two kills is always good. Actually keeping the economy really low with Fierce. And so, this is where things get a little bit easier for CAX moving into the next gun round, because if the economy for Fierce is low, that puts it at risk of sort of breaking easily. So, CX, as many kills as they can get here, makes it best as possible. Bomb finally gets planted for Fierce. LS making the long haul back towards a man. He could actually make this work, but that shot gives away his position. A little strange, perhaps assuming they know exactly where he is, but in fact they didn't. Which was the... which, when he looks back at this, would probably be pretty sad. This player's unfolded this way. Hype eyes the iron goal. He's planted for a middle as well. And easy taps away. 12 to 11. This game is just so close, Alex. Nothing really between it. Just a couple of individual plays, a couple of clutches go a certain way. CX onto the buy runs, and I kind of talked about this earlier, I touched on it slightly. They seem to be very confident when they have the weapons in play. Yeah, and at the end there, with the bomb planted so open, it's almost impossible for LS to win that retake as a CT. There's just too many angles to deal with. You have to look towards mid, you have to look towards truck. Could still be a player in towards forklift or any sort of position to spot towards that bob. The only one you have cleared is a main. Either way, some aggression taken by CEX. They want something to give them the early advantage after losing the last two rounds. LS isn't going to go any further. He's just going to sit on top of the boost. And 
he shouldn't be exposed, although the flash was really well done. LS trying to pounce from that, and you can see Swaggy, after spotting the flashbang, very concerned that this is a possibility. But Molly should force LS off. Okay, LS falls forwards, and he gets the headshot. Instant trade is found, so it's just a one for one, and that's not too bad, especially with M in opening up A. Yeah, Emin finds the headshot, it's on to Murky, ZNX, and Captain Incredible, also known as Rezu, as he has to try and make this work for CEX, not looking too solid with the man deficit coming in from behind, this boost could be the deciding factor, Alex is in behind them all, if they check this, it's heartbreaking, but if not, it's a big kill, Murky will start things off, gives away the position, only one kill comes out of that, and it's on to Toten G and Emin, they find the heads of Murky and ZNX, it leaves Rezu all on his own, he gets one, but that's it. Emin will pay, collect the triple and give 12 to Fierce Esports, who are really trying to win this home for map number three. Now, all tied up in terms of scoreline, not tied up in terms of buys for both teams into this round, or I guess you could say in terms of overall investment. It's definitely Fierce who have got the higher equipment value. CEX so, yeah, stacking towards A. Again, we see this pretty often on CT sides when you've only got the pistols. Fortunately for them, a flash into a main won't do a whole lot for them. As the fierce esports are holding incredibly passively all the way back from garage, not really willing to take any opening engagements. And again, this is part of their really safe anti low buy strategy. This is what fierce seem to do against every single time CEX have a weak buy. Yeah, CX, they have the Deagles in play, but you know, they haven't really found too much success when they've been on the low buys, and they haven't had that one standout player who's been able to find the headshots to really make the difference for them. Fierce have been pretty good at just sort of collectively winning these. Spamming through. The bat will not take any damage, but the shots whizzing past his head will realize there's a player right on the opposite end of that just trying to bail out a couple of shots perhaps of the T on the opposite end of it and there we go that's exactly what they wanted find the shots through utility getting ready to walk into the b bomb site it's going to be a full attack coming in from fierce sitting here is rezu he's got the five seven that molotov's grit that's going to force him into the angle to have to take a fight headshot comes in it's a kill from swaggy Shots just keep rattling through this smoke. Murky just trying to pick them up. And the Deagle rattling his way back up towards heaven. LS is finished off. I mean, it's just all about getting a couple of kills here. You can't really look too much on the pistols to see it to get anything done here because Fierce, it's all about just uh, cleaning up, minimizing the casualties. Although they do lose one player. Actually. There's a 1AK recovered by ZNX. Look to sneak away. Not going to happen. Fierce pumped him down and CEX almost have to win this round here come the two orbs for them we've seen them take this double orb setup a couple of times and it hasn't really done enough for them we'll see if today is the difference maker into round number 26 full AKs to work with over on the fierce side of things so they clearly did not believe in an orb for this game Stack towards A from CEX, again giving up mid control. So that's because Fierce got themselves four players over towards B. Rezu oh, nearly gets the shot through the smoke. They're going to have to fall back here. The smoke is allowing the T's to get up close. And Rezu needs to be careful right now. The push is about to come in and he gets the first kill, but there's the trade. Yeah, Captain Incredible able to find the opening kill. Two kills coming in from the CTC. X looking strong. Hype and Toten G, the last two players alive for this team. They are barreling through the smokes. The kill comes in from Toten G and Hype has got in behind them. They can really make this work with good communication. Murky should not be alive for much longer. It's going to be a two versus two. Knife kill. Oh, this could be the knife, but Murky spins around just the wrong time. The bomb will be planted on the B site. And they've got to come in. Both players here on the CT side need to find a way back into this bomb slot, otherwise Fierce, 14 on the board, and what a clutch this would be, Hype looking to pick up the kill, ZNX falls, Hype 9 one versus 2, picks up the first spin for the 180, and Hype wins it, a quad kill and 14 on the board for Fierce, as they keep pushing forward to try and take it to map 3. Just insta headshot on the flick there, really impressive from Hype, and that might just be the difference maker. 
Fierce with a two round lead. And again, they force CEX down to pistols, as has been the case with every single round win we've seen from Fierce in these recent rounds. You can see it's not exactly been comfortable for Fierce either. Their money is somewhat lacking in terms of having cash in the bank, but it might not matter at this rate because they're just consistently grinding out these round wins. CEX's pistol's not off to a good start. Murky already has been dealt with. A bit of an awkward spray there from Feebob. Emin looks for a kill of his own, but it looks as though Nuke Dog will fall to his teammate. And here we go, the AKs doing what they do best, dealing with the pistols. LS hoping for a miracle. Doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Toten G puts him to bed, and Fierce Esports have three chances to take us to a decider. Yeah, it's either third map or overtime. CX lost control of the second half and are looking to try and answer back the double upset of coming through. Murky and LS picking them up. And I think the big problem is for CX, Murky has been shut down a lot of the time on this map. He hasn't really been at that performance. We've seen in Inferno. So Fierce Esports have capitalized. It's actually Swagger who's been the big player. And so here in the last round of the game, perhaps Feebob starts things off well for Fierce. ZNX pulling it back. He picks up the double. There's still a chance here for CEX trying to pull it to overtime. As ZNX is sta staying alive inside the middle. Shots keep coming through. And it's into a four versus three. ZNX has dropped. Swaggy, of course, is the man to get the trade. And it's him and Hype who have been the top players for this team. Hype with the big clutches, Swaggy with the entries. And it's still a three versus three. Murky is alone on the A site. However, Nuke Dog is quite close by on the rotation, although maybe that's not going to be the case as Nuke Dog gets picked off towards mid. Now it's just two orbs solo holding separate sites. And I say they're holding separate sites. Maybe they're not anymore. Murky's moving over towards mid, leaving A vulnerable. There's a gap in that smoke, but he's not really going to be able to exploit it, or at least it's not going to be easy to. Oh, there it is, though. Hype doesn't realize there's a gap. Jumps up, gives away his life. However, Swaggy finds the easy trade, and LS has got to do a lot more. Swaggy finished. After getting the triple, LS will be able to pick that kill up, but it's a one versus one. And the Toten G wins this for fear, so we go to map number three. Or oh, it's going to be LS to win this and bring it to 15-13. Even at that point, CX economy's not looking too strong. You've still got a favor Fierce to take it, but running onto the spot. LS trying to make this work, taps the ball and bits the play from Toten G. The time ticking so low, the pressure building. You just got to give it to Fierce. They're about to win this 16-12. Toten G playing with LS. It's over. What a way to end it. Toten G picking up the win. Not even having to see his opponent. Big triple kill from Swaggy and CEX do win out the second map. We're going to map number three, Alex. It's gone the distance. What a long day we've had here at the SL UK and Ireland Premiership. And uh, Fierce, answer back. Yeah, again, a, a close map. So that's certainly a positive for both teams. But in the end there, Fierce just had a little bit too much. Again, it, it really was a team effort. We're not really seeing any individuals massively step up. You know, I remember a season or two ago, I think it must have been two seasons now, but when Smoothie was playing for Fish 1, 2, 3, he would really carry them. And that's not really happening as much here. It's a team effort. Yeah, we're seeing some highlight plays of some individuals that were stepping up across the board. The, the biggest ones obviously being the, the clutches from Hype, the, one, the memorable plays. Swaggy find a big entries on the, onto the bomb site. So yeah, like you said, team effort, but there's definitely individual presence there for Fierce Esports to bring them to this point. I'm personally looking forward to the rest of this action. We're going to map number three right after this, Alex. So we're going to go to a break. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back with the rest of the best of three, map number three after this.